Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Python if statements. And I was performing earlier, so I figured I'd just keep my performing clothes on. Show you how sophisticated I am. <laughs> okay, so if statements. All right, this is um, all about branching. So if you don't want your program to just run uh, one instruction after another, you can make it branch. And uh, I'm just going to create a new text document. And I'm going to call it, uh, I think we're up to two, three, dot pi. Hit enter. And I'll be using programmers notepad to edit here. And the other thing I might do is open up a console so that we can run this uh, in a console without having the window closed. So if you want to open up a console window in uh, Windows 10 or, or I think any Windows back to like XP, uh, at a particular folder, you hold shift and you right click and you come down to open command window here. And that'll give you a command window. All right, so we'll use that in a minute. For now, we're talking about if statements. So this is, um, this is how you get the computer to branch or make decisions. So if we've got something like um, a variable, say j, and we set it to 90, we might want to test that in our program. So we can use an if statement. If j equals 90, then print, it's 90, exclamation point. And I'll save that. All right, so what we've got here is called an if statement. A condition follows, and if the condition is true, then the code block of the if statement is executed. And if the condition is false, then the program will just fall down here and it'll type or it'll do whatever is uh, after the if statement. So um, I might just put goodbye there, something like that. All right, so if J is 90, then it's gonna print it's 90 exclamation point, And then it'll come down here and print goodbye. Uh, if J is not 90, then the program will skip this line just here because this is the if statements code block and it'll just print goodbye. Uh, maybe we could test that out. So Python, uh, you can't use the Python interpreter like this unless you've got your environment variable set up, but yeah, there you go. It's 90, why did it not print the uh, goodbye? I mustn't have saved it. All right, so I hit control S to save it. Okay, there we go, now it's working. Uh, it's 90 and goodbye. So it executed the if statements code block because the if statements condition was true and then it finished uh, by printing out goodbye. Uh, if j is something else, say j is 100, 100 doesn't equal 90, so we should just get the last line here printed. Yeah, there you go. So a couple of things, we'll go through these uh, operators in just a second, these comparison operators. Um, you can put multiple lines in here, so an if block can have multiple lines. We could have, uh, that's really great, or something like that. And every line that's got the same tab level uh, will be considered to be inside the if statements code block. So it's only when you get to a tab level less than the if statements code block that the other code block has started, or the normal sort of outside the if statement code block. Um, yeah, all right, so let's let's also mention that um, if there's only one line, you don't need a code block. Um, you can just put um, that single statement after the if statement itself. Yeah, same thing, but you can only do that if there's one line. But moving along, there's a, another couple of operators. So this means equal to, and it's different from this, which means sort of set. So a single equals by itself is used to set a variable value and two equals is used to compare. Okay, so this operator just here and this operator just here are different. Do be careful. Um, you want double equals inside comparisons, like if statements. Um, all right, so the other operators we've got not equal to. Uh, this is the opposite to equal to. It's gonna run the if statements code block if j is not equal to 90. Well, at the moment, j is set to 100. Uh, 100 is not 90, so that statement is true. It's going to run the code block. Um, I could say here it's not 90, just for correctness. Yeah, so not equals to, just the opposite of equal to. We've also got uh, less than. Uh, if j is less than 90, so at the moment, 100 is not less than 90. 100 is greater than 90, so this uh, statement just here is false. The code block would not run. Um, we've got greater than uh, 100, the value of j is greater than 90. So in this instance, the code block would run. Uh, we've got less than or equal to, which is similar to less than, but um, it includes equal to as well. So, well, 100 is not less than or equal to 90. Uh, so the code block wouldn't run. But if we had our variable j set to 90, the code block would run. 
Uh, if we had the variable j set to anything less than 90, say 78 or even negative 78, uh, or we could use floats, negative 78.8723, that's less than 90, or that's less than or equal to 90, so the code block would run there as well. And the only other operator is greater than or equal to. So those are the comparison operators. I think that's all there are. There's uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to and not equal to. Um, in previous versions of Python, you could use that to mean not equal to, but as of uh, Python 3, the not equal to operator is only that one. Uh, let's just get rid of this line here. Okay, so you can get a little bit more sophisticated. Instead of just having a single option, uh, you can have more than one of them. So we could have uh, at the end an else, and we'll just say print. It's not 90, okay, that's all good. It's 90, all right, and we come at the top and we'll set our variable j to 90. Okay, so an if block or a block of ifs and elifs can actually finish with an optional else. And if none of the conditions before it, we've only got one in this instance, if none of the conditions before it execute, then the else will execute. So the else doesn't have a condition. It's just else and then colon, and then you open up a new code block. Um, this, this whole code block business is super, super important. So in Python, code blocks are just tabbed. In other languages, we'd have braces like this to differentiate our code blocks, but Python, it's just tabs. Yeah, so a code block is whatever is on the same tab level. All right, so uh, in this instance, j equals 90. Uh, so the first if won't run. Um, and after that, the program will jump down here to the else. And because else doesn't have a condition, uh, it's always going to print this 90. All right, so if we run this program as a bit of a demo, I might just save it first. Uh, what we should get is it's 90. Yeah, there you go. Uh, if it was something else, say 101, um, then the first if statement will run and the program won't even look at the else. So once one of these if conditions runs, um, the other one isn't even looked at. Yeah, there you go. It's not 90. Um, so after this statement is true, I mean, J is not 90, the program doesn't care about the else. It just it doesn't care. It doesn't even look at it. All right. So the next thing to even make things a little bit more complicated is else if. Um, in Python, it's elif. Uh, just like that. And these have their own conditions. So if it's not 90, let's actually, let's grab some user input. So user age, us, quer, what the, um, user age equals input, input your age. Okay, so if you want to grab some information from the user, uh, from the console, these are just little console apps that we're writing, you can use the input uh, method just here. Um, it takes an optional prompt. Yeah, so if you want to print something out, then uh, you can do that. It returns a string, so at the moment user age would be a string, and we don't want that, so I'll, tr I'll tra transform it into an int. Uh, we can talk about this casting thing just here a, a bit later, but all that we're doing here is asking for the user's age, and I might say uh, if age if age is less than 10, then we'll say like, um, isn't it your bedtime? Something like that. Uh, L if age is less than 45, then we'll say print. Uh, wow, um, that's the same age as me. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, let's make another one. L if uh, age is less than 100. I'll say like um, print. Um, I don't know, like um, like well done. Uh, you should get a medal. Uh, otherwise, we'll say print. Are you sure? Okay. So how did, how does all of this work? Elif is just like the word otherwise. Uh, in English, so uh, we could have here, uh, otherwise, yeah, it's exactly the same. So if age is less than 10, uh, if that fails, then it'll come down here to the first elif or the first otherwise, and it'll check that condition. And if that condition fails, if the first two conditions fail, it'll check the second elif. And you can have as many of these elifs or otherwise or else ifs as you like. Uh, in other languages, these are uh, else if, like that, yeah, but in, in in Python, it's just elif. Okay, so only one of these will run. Only one of these will run. If we just save that and I give it a bit of a play. All right, input your age. I'm going to say my age is four. Well, there you go. What's this? 
trace back to the most recent call. If age is less than 10, what's well, user age? Hold on a second. All right. Let's just copy, copy, copy. How many saw that coming? <laughs> All right, my age is four, dude. All right, isn't it your bedtime? I guess it is. Uh, input your age. All right, let's try uh, 45. Okay, well done. You should get a medal, and I think I should. All right, let's try something else. Let's try um, 8,909. All right, are you sure? Okay, so you see only one of these executes uh, at a time, and the whole code block executes, so if we had a bunch of different statements in here, uh, if this code block was executing, all of them would execute. Okay, I think the only other thing that I wanted to mention is nesting, and uh, this is a little, little bit confusing, but you can actually nest these things inside each other. So say we know the user's age is 10, uh, then we know that it's going to run this code block. You know, it's going to come in here somewhere. It's going to run this print just here uh, if the user's age is less than 10. We might want to have an additional check. So what we can do is nest an if. We can put an if block inside uh, an if. It's a little bit weird, but have a look. Okay, so if uh, user age is less than zero, we can say print. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> And we can put our I's and our E's around the right way. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, only if this condition is true uh, will this condition be checked. So in order for this second line just here to print, this one has to be true. And this condition has to be true as well. Um, if we just save that and I hit run, we got my video at test. Input your age. All right, so if we type four, it just says, isn't it your bedtime? But if we type something that's less than 10 and it's less than zero, then this second line just here will run. Uh, this nested if blocks uh, condition will be true. So let's type negative 90. There you go. Isn't it your bedtime? I don't believe you. You can nest these things as deeply as you want. So inside this one here, we could have another if. Um, and it can have its own L ifs too. So L if and an else at the end. And inside this one, we could have a bunch more. Uh, this, and then a bit of an elif. Yeah, so you can just keep nesting and nesting and nesting. I want to say that there is actually uh, an easier way to test conditions like this uh, without necessarily nesting things. So sometimes you can use other operators, or and and, and actually make conditional expressions um, combining multiple conditions together. But we're not going to be talking about that today. So for the time being, if you want to play around with this stuff, it's really good to get used to nesting if statements. That's about all that I wanted to say. I've got a uh, a Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing. I've got a Facebook page as well where I put up things sometimes. And I've also got a music channel where I like to sing and play some music. All right, that's all that I wanted to say. I want you to have a really good day. Adios.